Welcome to another edition of the Nightly Nuge. And I love Friday Free For All's edition, Ted, because, heck, I mean, I'm always learning something and I love the music. And so I am a huge Chuck Berry fan. And I hear you talk about how Chuck Berry influenced you along with so many other people in the music industry. So my question is, where does a guy like Chuck Berry get his influence? And I'd love it if you'd walk me through where you think Chuck got his you know, kind of, you know, his muse, how that led to his music and then how that ultimately led right to Ted Nugent's music. Well, boy, I'm just the guy to celebrate that because Chuck Berry's spirit, it just saturates my very being. I'm I'm like a, a martial arts Chuck Berry genuflecting at the altar of all things real rhythm and blues rock and roll. Let me take you through a quick synopsis here, Keith. So the uh, the blacks of the world were heart shattered because other blacks and other people around the world thought they could own some black people. They could enslave them. So many blacks were slaves on a global scale. It was a standard operating procedure where if you could overwhelm a tribe or a village or a a culture, you could enslave them. Well, those who were enslaved knew that it was wrong, that it was evil. So they would sit around the campfire and with their broken hearts, they would emote the, 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 the evil of slavery. And it came out in typical guitar music. It was acoustic guitars because they hadn't electrified it yet with uh, Rickenbacker and Les Paul. But they'd get the... They'd get... Well, I'm broken hearted and I, I want to see my girl. I don't feel that spirit coming on like God wanted it to be. When you are enslaved and you know it's evil and wrong, music can at least be remedial temporarily. All right, and then when truth, logic, and common sense, goodwill, and decency freed the slaves, all of a sudden, Howlin' Wolf and Muddy Waters and Mose Allison and Lightning Hopkins, they got an electric guitar. a little bit more excitement and then Chuck Berry came along at the right time and he went yeah well let's see if we got that blue stuff how about it? Goosebumps. And then this little smart ass kid was born in Detroit in 1948. And shortly after that, Chuck Berry's first album came out with a brand new experimental guitar by Charlie Bird and Hank Garland called The Birdland. And it was on the cover of the Chuck Berry record. And I didn't know it at the time because I was still a mushy brain kid, but that mushy brain was absorbing everything from the mystical flight of the arrow of Fred Bear to the outrageous uppityness of Chuck Berry. And eventually in 1969, that guitar player from Detroit got on stage in Riviera Beach, Florida and played bass guitar for Chuck Berry. Wow. And what a guy, what an, what, a, he invented it. He and Bo Dilly, the Bo Dilly thing was obviously. <laughs> and.
and Buddy Holly and everybody else, the Ventures and certainly the Beatles and the Stones and the Kinks and the Who and the Amboy Dukes and everybody I know was moved by that soulful musical authority and the work ethic, the work ethic that these black artists instilled in us. James Brown was known as the hardest working man in show business and certainly Mitch Ryder learned that, Bob Seger learned that, I learned that, everybody I know learned that and that's where that fire and that passion and that work ethic really came because you can't play moving, meaningful, passionate, excitable, stimulating music unless you put your heart and soul into learning how to deliver that art form. And the work ethic is rarely uh, adequately mentioned in the music world because all the bands I know, I don't care if it's ACDC or ZZ Top or Cheap Trick or Aerosmith or the Ted Nugent Band or Sammy Hager, unbelievable work ethic. They, we bust our ass to present the best, tightest, most emotional, moving, exciting, dynamic music we possibly can. And we really learned that from Chuck Berry and those founding fathers. And today in 2022, I have a brand new record called Detroit Muscle. And there's a lick on there. It's a, it's a bastardization of the honky tonk that Chuck Berry, and everybody played honky tonk. <laughs> How do you not bebop to the honky? Yeah, exactly. Honk? And so I would take it, and obviously in uh, my th song, the, the, and all that is is instead of. Same approach, and then yeah. the Bo Diddley. That's it. That chicka 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 chick. And then on the new record, Detroit Muscle. Like All wow. that grind and rhythm, we all got it. Like Bob Seger said in the one song, we are all Chuck Berry's children. So never forget that all your favorite music, all of it, I don't care what artist it might be, Chuck Berry laid a foundation. And then the Motown Funk Brothers and all these soulful black artists that still were connected to the heartbreak of the evil of slavery and the celebration of throwing off the shackles. That's where uppity, uninhibited, irreverent, ferocious, fun rock and roll came from. And don't ever forget that. I never forget that. Awesome, Ted. What a great, great story from really start to finish today. So tomorrow um, you're going to be in Fredericksburg, Texas, Saturday night, which is awesome. And tomorrow I want to talk to you. It's our weekend edition. I want to talk about the fact that your tour is wrapping up. And I have a feeling you've got some hunting in store. And we'll talk a little bit about that tomorrow when we celebrate our weekend edition of the Nightly Nuge, where there is absolutely no fake news. See you tomorrow.